Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Brownie Points. You sent in your questions about relationships and I admit I have, I have no clue about them. So occasionally I'll bring in an expert. With me is Dr. John Daly, a distinguished professor at the University of Texas at Austin. And anything you need to know about relationships, communication, professional or personal, this guy knows it. Written over 100 articles, six books, very great guy. So he's gonna answer some of your questions and give you way better answers than me. Oh, how do you avoid or get out of the friend zone? I would say it's very difficult to get out of the friend zone. <laughs> uh, the friend zone is a trap you get into that you sometimes can't get out of because you threaten the friendship by making it a potential relationship thing. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be thinking in terms of, you know, how much will I want to risk the friendship on this thing? How much will I friend? Now, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, some people end up doing that. You get, I mean, there's, there's thousands of stories students tell me of you get drunk at a party, I'm not recommending alcohol, <laughs> but you end up being tequila, with your friend. To get out tequila, of the friend zone. To get out of the friend zone. <laughs> it does work sometimes, but it depends what happens after that, right? Yeah. And how you negotiate afterwards. So, uh, I mean, I'm not recommending you get drunk in any way, matter or form. That's kind of a crazy way of developing a relationship. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who tell me that's how they make that move. And if it works out fine, if it doesn't, it's going to be awkward afterwards. Is chivalry really dead? Should women expect men to be? Probably on the first time together, first going out time, okay? Maybe the second. Initially, I think yes. I think that's expectation is still the man will pay the first time. And get out your wallets. Okay. Yeah, exactly, get your wallets. Sorry. Get your wallets. Sorry, that's life. <laughs> when is it appropriate to move in with somebody? I think it's appropriate when you make a decision that you want to spend most of your time together. There's no evidence that moving in together before marriage helps the marriage in any way matter or form. Uh, there's no evidence that it hurts the marriage necessarily either. Um, many people move in and never get married, so I would not assume you get married when you decide to move in. Oh, this was a big one. Is it possible for a just friends relationship after you've been boyfriend and girlfriend? The answer to that one is interesting. Yes, it's possible, but only at a point where you'd be happy seeing your ex in the arms of another person, dancing slowly, <laughs> kissing and fondling each other. And you go, yes, I'm happy for her or him. You can't be friends until you're really happy in another relationship. If you're really happy about that, then you can be friends. But as long as you have one iota of desire, one iota of jealousy left, you can't be friends. Oh, how should you go about dating a coworker? So I think you need to approach that very gingerly, very carefully. And a good, good rule of thumb is you gotta spend enough time together and you gotta kinda of talk to each other enough at a time. You're really absolutely sure that the other person's interested. If you're working in a very small unit, small organization, you can create a lot of drama. If you're working in a really large place where you never see the person anyway, then go for it. It just depends upon the nature of the environment here. Are you gonna see the person at work or not? If you're gonna see them at work, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> I would be careful at least. Is it okay to date a friend of your ex if they were the one that broke up with you? Or even period, I guess. In time, yes. But I think right away, no. Not right away. <laughs> That's kind of awkward, I think. That's <laughs> awkward if you do it right away. I think over time, sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you do know you're running the risk that you're going to mess it up with a friend of yours. It's really weird for that friend to say, you can't go out with this person I've had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. But I think you got to take some time between the breakup and doing it. This was another big one. What is the best way to go about breaking up with somebody? With all the social media out there and every which way you can do it, is there a number one method you recommend? Face to face. It's I, really hard to do. That's how I would answer that one. One. For it's my really <laughs> hard to do. You can't carry on the drama for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. you got to be done with it. Do it in a public situation rather than a private situation so people can't go crazy on you. Uh, <laughs> do it when you're sober and in a good mood. Texting somebody to dump them is kind of a bad thing to do. Um, don't hide behind technology. Don't hide behind technology, exactly. <laughs> and don't um, don't let your friends know first either. Okay, that oh, that's a big one. If you didn't listen, don't let your friends know. Like I think I'm gonna break up with John. Don't. Yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. And because they, he'll hear about it probably from one of the friends because social okay. media. It's easier to text somebody say there I'm done. Mm -hmm. But questions: Would you want somebody to text you? Treat others how you want to be treated. Exactly. Golden rule. They are most important element in forming relationships. That's something you have to have to have. Long-term respect. A good relationship, you gotta respect each other deeply. And that's sometimes a very difficult thing in a relationship. 
respect is saying, I'm lucky to be with that person. That person's a better person than I ever thought they were. That person makes me a better person by being around them. It's different than love, is respect. I think you also need to be good with each other. You, you know, my wife says we don't fight, we just annoy each other sometimes. <laughs> and I think that's probably better than fighting in many cases, right? That's uh, really cute saying. But what happens is in a good relationship, respect seems to be one of the key things we forget about sometimes. If you believe in different religions, does that automatically set up your relationship with them? No. Different religions, more and more people are doing it. So it doesn't necessarily limit you. I think it requires a little more work, a little more talking. And in truth, some people actually convert when they get married. Yeah, makes All sense. Right? There's no reason why you cannot live with two different religions in a family. The issue becomes when you have children. I think you gotta agree beforehand how you're gonna raise your children. Mm -hmm. You can fall in love with lots of people and the, the religion's only one of many characteristics of the person. Mm -hmm. How do you trust again after a bad um, fight or mishap or maybe a cheated? Cheating is different than fighting. Okay. Okay. Trust is once challenged, it's almost impossible to get it back 100% right away at least. Mm -hmm. You've got to rebuild trust very slowly. And I mean, it depends upon the nature of what the trust violation is. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone lies. Everyone lies in relationships. <laughs> so when you finally lied about a minor thing, it's just, <clears throat> you would lie to it probably about that in the situation, right? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily destroy the relationship. Hooking up with somebody else can threaten the relationship much more in terms of trust, right? Mm -hmm. But people survive that. Couples survive that on a regular basis in some cases. The reality is trust has to be rebuilt slowly though in that process. Mm -hmm. Rebuild trust by reassuring the person, by being more reliable, by indicating you have deep vulnerability yourself. If this happened again, you would feel horrible as well. Uh, you're honest about it to the degree you need to be honest about it. Uh, it takes a lot of work to build trust because when you lose trust, it shadows the relationship. It's never tech to color again. Mm -hmm. It's always in gray. Uh, and that's yeah. the problem with trust. It becomes gray. And you've got to slowly get that light back on. It takes a while to get that light back on to get it shining again. Can it be done? Yes, but it takes a lot of work by both people, not one person. Ooh. What questions are off limits for first dates? Don't be creepy. <laughs> What's your address? Yeah, don't be creepy. Uh, it's a very basic rule of first relationship, but do not be creepy. Any question that people go, that is creepy, is not a question you want to ask. Everyone puts on a show the first date, first time together. And that means you, you've got to be careful you don't get creepy in that situation. So you don't ask personal questions the first time. Let them lead with the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, don't talk about exes. You would not do that with a stranger. And the first time you go out with them, think of them more as a stranger than you think of somebody <laughs> with an established relationship. It's kind of weird to do that. Girls, Say, we do this, that whole, he hasn't called. It's been like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, calm down. Yeah. Women calm. ruminate more than men. Women will, you know, I, I send you a text saying I'll be three, five minutes late. You and your friends will spend four hours talking about what that means. Guys don't do that. Guys don't ruminate as much, especially about minor Fancy. things. It's a girl thing. Five minutes late means like he's not going to marry me. Yes, exactly. Just, it's the first time. Uh, first he's not going to marry me. We're not going to have kids. Yes. Sober. And he so, quit his job. All because that five minutes late. So there you have it. Your questions about relationships. Dr. John Daly just answered them. Pick up one of his books, maybe. Hey, pick up a book and read it. An article online, Dr. John Daly Google. Do that too. I hope everybody has a great Valentine's Day. And if these questions helped you, don't forget to like me and subscribe for more brownie points. Bye guys. Hi guys, thank you always for watching. Don't forget, I am in the middle of a charity event right now in honor of my mother and her books. Go to the link in the description below, click on it and donate and I will give those donations to the Children's Medical Hospital and also I am donating some of my mom's books to Children's Medical Hospital as well. Don't forget to click the link below and then also click those other links where you subscribe and you like me. Bye!